All right, welcome to another episode of the Scout Life. Good news, we just scored a, uh, it's probably like a 76 or 77 buckskin tan Scout Terra. So the partner Scout to, the, to this old 75, super stoked. It's been sitting for an uh, undisclosed amount of time. It looks like it's been for a while, it's missing some parts. So let's go take a look and let's see if we can get it running today. All right, so I'm here with Owen. What's up? He's off for the summer, so he's been doing some work. Um, I'm gonna help out the Mish. But I wanted to give a quick update on the 75 Buckskin since the last video you saw with our epic road trip and revival. The 345 is really good. It definitely has more power. Transmission is definitely it's like good it seems reliable but it's also suspect yes please but the main thing so and i'm going to do a video on this is this has an edelbrock 1406 which cold start is amazing just overall running and driving it's it's really great uh, economy i'm getting like 11 but I know it's probably a little bit too big and I, I know there's certain people that don't like those carburetors, certain people do. I've always had really good reliability from them. But um, I'm going to try, it's some Holly 450, I think. It's a square bore, four barrel. Um, so I'm pretty stoked to try that. But the main issue with this 1406 is it is the hot start is not good. Like it cranks, you have to crank it for like more than you should. So I don't know if it's like dumping fuel or something. Um, but anyway, let's, let's uh, turn our attention to the Terra. I literally found this Scout. Well, it kind of found me, but I literally found it less than a mile away from our shop. So. Let's flip the cam and uh, you never know, man. You always think the scouts are all tapped out, but you never know where there's the, the juicy nuggets laying around. So um, pretty stoked. Let's check it out. By the way, the AC in the 75 is such a game changer, man. Works so good. Yeah, it's just nice having AC. So yeah, there's this storage yard next to me, like kind of like an industrial storage yard. And the old gem, uh, I think it's a 77. But let's call it the 77 Buckskin Tarot. It's just tucked away. It's a little waiting to be discovered. There she is. Look at that. And I know you're, we're gonna get comments about the 1980 next to it. That one is not for sale. That's the owner's uh, baby in its original paint, low mileage ST33. That's a killer truck. We'll look at it. But uh, let's go do a walk around of the Terra, man. Introduce you to it. So here she is. I don't know much about it. Um, it is definitely is a 77. How do I know that? Well, it could be a 78 because it has the plastic rim. So that is a 78 to 80 feature, but look at this. So notice that. But if you look back here, it's got the metal ring, like the metal taillight housings, which means that's typically a 77. Also, the wiring harness, I'm pretty sure, um, is early model. Let's go take a look. I love doing the sleuthing, but it's, man, this is original paint. So it's June of 77, which is early in 77. So those, those front, that front grill is interesting. Um, I love the olive tone with the uh, with the buckskin seat. Obviously, uh, an original Scout seat. 
been reupholstered. Uh, this steering column, they would never would put a black steering column with a green dash, so this has been replaced. Feels a little bit loose, it's missing the turn signal. So there's a lot of stuff. I do like this uncut gauge panel, it's missing the dash pad, that's replaceable. Oh, four speed, that's good news that it's not a three speed. Four wheel drive. I mean, it's all here, it's a little gnarly, but Owen's gonna really work hard to clean it up. I love the Terras, they got the nice room back here. Um, we'll kind of do a rust check on it. So this is interesting, chrome window frame, painted wing window. So one of those is not original. It's got the classic Terra Traveler rust. It's really hard to find. I mean, scouts in general, but especially Terras and Travelers without rust down here. So we might like put in a patch panel um, just put a patch panel from here and, and blend the paint. It's got these tie downs, man, for tying stuff down. So clue number one, that something's missing under the hood is this radiator. If you notice, like it's missing the brackets, like someone actually unsoldered the brackets. But good news, we got an air cleaner housing. Oh, that's a clue right there to what engine it has. Small boy. This bracket is a clue. But not many other parts under here. Oh, we got a spare 196. Scout 2 196. Could come in handy. So let's, let's just go without being given a total spoiler. Yep, 196. Power steering though, that's cool. Power brakes, that's cool. Um, no air conditioning, but it does have an air pump. We'll probably take that off. It's original wiring, like I was saying, this is the early style wiring. Supposedly the owner said it ran, I don't know how long ago, but obviously before someone took the radiator. So I didn't know that it needed a radiator. So I had the boys out in Iowa ship me out a radiator. Good used one. So. Owen, where is the radiator? Oh, good. Ooh. I probably shouldn't have left that out. But there's the radiator. Owen's getting our tools set up. So our goal today is just to try to get this thing running. And maybe we'll try to drive it. We'll see how it goes. But while we're at it, I'll show you this 1980. I love this color. Gentle, gentle. This is a Holy Grail truck. Original paint, no rust. Look at that. I'll try to talk him out of this one. Owner's a great guy. Anyway. So we're gonna get to work. First things first, we're gonna address the cooling. Owen's gonna work on the cooling system. I'm gonna work on the fuel system and we'll see how it goes. We'll kind of keep you informed. Should be fun. All right, Mike is on. Okay, so we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna load. Uh, we totally forgot water. No. But... no, that's not enough. We need gallons. Oh, for the so let's get the radiator set. I'll start doing it. You can run back to the shop and get uh, water. Okay, we're just gonna check, make sure that it, the area is clear. We're gonna do our old trick where we hyperextend the hood. On the later model ones with this little, uh, I don't know, crash zone, crash crinkle. You wanna go, here you go, on the other side. Doing a radiator is typically best with two people. And 
The 196 and the, and the V8 radiator are very similar. They're typically two core, the 196. And this inlet is smaller. There's little signs of corrosion, but overall it looks pretty good. It's an original radiator. It's good. You want to be careful on the blades of the fan, but you do want to have the fan in. Hold on, we have to go down more. Can you lift your, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm good. Do you have two? No, that's not right. Yeah, that one works. And these are just five sixteenths. No, hey, use that one. That's a quarter twenty. Yeah, the shroud bolts are a quarter twenty. All right, so. This is going to be actually pretty easy because, like, they left the hoses on. When they gaffed the radiator, they left the hoses on. So, in a little gift, they actually left us hose clamps, too. You could do that lower hose. Oh, yeah. Did we, we didn't stop that hose. No, it's on there. It's on, it's on the bottom. It's on the motor. That's the bypass oh, hose. I see. Sorry. But I bought a hose clamp, so put a hose clamp on it first. Oh, wait, it's right here. Yeah. Oh, nice. Epic. I mean, that was nice of the people that gaffed the radiator that they left us the hose clamps. I always love that. By the way, I've had a couple comments of people asking me about my readers because I'm getting up there, man. Starting in your mid 40s, you kind of need these readers. But you don't have to get them at Walmart. You can if you want, nothing wrong with that. But I like these stylish ones. They're from a brand called Caddis or Caddies. Not a sponsor, but hey, cool. They're, they actually are better quality than the, I've had like the cheap Amazon or Walmart ones. And uh, not a sponsor, but just dig them, man. They're cool. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some inspecting and I'm gonna dive into this a little deeper, but there is some wiring. That's, I think, the exciter wire or a resistance wire, but it, obviously something melted. Yeah, there's some real rig riggery happening. So I need to kind of start looking at that. This one's going down to the starter. But it's got this like something going to the goal box. Like there, there's some weird stuff happening. I couldn't get it to turn over. So after um, we do the radiator, Owen's going to put the battery in and we'll just see if we don't catch fire. Oh my gosh, there's one here. Another half inch. I mean, the wiring's semi kosher up here. The alternator is plugged in, but it's just right here. There's some just, and you see, if you see that red wire right there, that was running across like as if they were jumping it straight to the coil. Like this is loose. So this is the kind of stuff when you get a an unknown vehicle. The other thing I did not bring is uh, a remote solenoid. So we might have to just start it with a quarter or a screwdriver. Let's see if we can see in there. 
One thing about California rigs, you got to make sure all these yellow clamps are suspect too. Like someone did a lot of butt connecting on this harness. So, and it's always fun when they use a black cable for the positive. That's always fun. And uh, I'm not sure what to do, but the fuel, the fuel system is fully hooked up. I brought the boat tank, which is pretty helpful. I might actually unhook, I think I'm going to unhook the tank and just get it running off the boat tank so I don't, so I, I'm just sure about that. It's one less thing to worry about. Anyway, let's keep wrenching. these revival type of situations you see people pouring fuel into the vent bowl to fill up the bowl of the carburetor I mean you could juice it with brake clean or starter fluid but that's not as advisable on a 196 carb this is the vent so you're gonna get a funnel or I actually forgot my can I, I keep like a soda can because it's easy to um, shape and kind of make a little ac get an accurate pour so I might look for a soda can and then cut it uh, but you're gonna I'm gonna fill this up with gas probably like quarter a third of a cup we'll go into there then I'll test to make sure the accelerator pump is pumping I did have the guy ship out a spare carburetor just in case All right, so I think we got the radiator set. Checking over the heater hoses, they look to be intact. I did find the clutch spring was, uh, I found it in the overflow can, which is kind of funny. But the bracket's missing, so that's something I'm gonna wanna pay attention to. I also, hmm, look at, there's this arm here that's not going to anything. I did uh, spin the motor over by hand and it did turn over. So I'm just gonna hook a battery up and kind of see what happens. Not the greatest battery cables. That's something we'll definitely want to replace. But we got a battery tray. And around coastal California, the trucks are usually pretty solid. I uh, was looking at this. We're likely going to have some vacuum leaks, so I'll probably bring back some vacuum hoses. This is a live wire, so we'll put that there. This battery is different orientation, so always, just always, man, don't ever assume. So I'm tapping first, I get nothing. So that's either a good sign or a bad sign. All right, let's, uh, let's just turn the key, see what happens. Regulator works. So I'm getting no lights, no gauges. It's in neutral. We do get, all right, I'm gonna check power at the coil. We do get cranking, but no gauges. No heater motor. So something's jacked. I hope, I don't really want to rewire it. It's kind of a pain. But at least we got crankage, that's a good sign. 
So next up, what I'm going to do is grab my test light. You always want to have a test light. And I'm going to get going on the fuel system, hook up the boat tank. So the boat tank is hooked up and now I'm taking some tri-flow and just like the accelerator pump rod is not actuating very well. So, um, oh, and the good news is we got fuel from the boat tank. Now Owen's got some water. We're not going to put antifreeze in it. I'm just lubing up everything around here, trying to get this accelerator pump to actuate. I might just put a spring on it because it's... Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, I'll put water in it. No, nope, just go for it. Is there like a limit? Nope, it'll just it'll just fill up. Yep. I mean, we'll see. Should have brought rags, dude. We do have fluid in the ma in the master cylinder. It doesn't look great, but there is. It's better me and dry. So I'm topping that off. Who knows if we have brakes. Sing on, I, even if we get it running, it's just, I was telling Owen, it's gonna need a lot of work. When you get these trucks that have just been neglected and rigged and sitting, it just takes a lot of time. When Owen's done there, I also put the battery, you know, and I got it to turn over. Sweet. Like it goes like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. So when Owen is done there, I'll have him crank it over and I'll check for power at the ignition and we'll hope. Cut the top of this and no, it's fine. We don't really need that right now. Let's chuck it in the bed, bro. Stoked. Yeah, we're going to buff it all out, man. I think it's going to look fantastic. We're going to put a two and a half inch lift. Got some 33s with some very special wheels. Show you those later. Um, yeah, man, it's going to be epic. I do like these hubcaps, though. I'm, I'm not knocking these, and the tires are actually decent. But I just think a Terra looks better. Lift it a little bit. Sweet man, I'm stoked. I might paint the paint the fiberglass top white, buff out the paint, and just run it, man. Make it into a sweet runner. And with gas prices, um, these 196s should get like 16, oh, 16 to 18 oh. mpgs. And leaking. Oh, where's the leaking? This in the hose. All right. We're going to get this filled, then we'll uh, go close up and check for power on the coil. Okay, Discovery, if you look, I'll take the gear, I'll show you up close. So I know there's a bunch of riggery, but look at this. See the black and the black and right there? That looks like a Petronics to me. Sure, I could pull the cap, but I'm kind of lazy. So that simplifies. That's why the the gold box is still there. This is the gold box right there. Andrew knows all about those. Um, and actually, if you've watched our Petronics install video, I talk about that. All right, so what we're going to look for now, oh, and go into the truck.
Ford. Yeah. Test light is your friend, man, in all things. Windows roll down, that's sweet. So and just go ahead and turn the key to the on position. All the, keep going. Whoa. Okay. So what this is telling me is we do not have power to the coil. Um, so keep is the key still in the on position? So I'm gonna probe turn it off. It's off. Okay. Turn it on. So I'm looking for power to the coil. And what's interesting is this should be the power to the coil. But I think the riggery over there is making so this is on all the time. So which is fine. We just won't be able to shut it off, but that's probably why they had it. Let me check one more thing. Is, turn the key to the on position. Okay. So that's good that we don't, I don't know why this is hooked up. That should probably be disconnected, but we're going to trust it. Okay. Can you turn, can you crank it for a second? You want to make sure that you, just for one sec. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, and can you sit in the driver's seat and just try to start it? All right, here we go. Make sure it's in neutral. I think I, I checked. I think it is. Yep, ready. Woo, she got bad exhaust leak. Uh, go ahead and just like pump the gas a little bit and try to try to start it again. Hold up on the gas. Just just mellow out on pumping the gas. Just crank it again. Are you pumping the gas? Hmm. Can you push the gas to the floor? So I'm manually cycling the accelerator pump because it's not working. All right, try to start it again. Did you try to give it any gas? Okay, try to keep it running next time. Give it gas. No, deep, like longer stroke. Okay. Try to keep it running if you can. Thing is jank, man. And we're getting water on the intake, which oh, could just be from this hose clamp. You have a screwdriver? No. All right, hold on. Okay, so the engine sounds like junk. Like it does not sound right. Like the timing is super retarded. Yeah, oh, and you got to tighten these hose clamps tighter. It's all good. Just saying. All right, let's try it again. So while, while I think the fuel pump is pumping fuel, I don't think that we have. All right, try it again. I don't think the accelerator pump is working.
Yeah, the key is uh, not working. Okay, so wicked exhaust leak. I mean, massive exhaust leak. That was crazy. So I think the carburetor, I think I'm gonna change the carburetor. We definitely need to do a tune up. We need to bring the timing light over. I need to clean up some electrical. I'll probably just spend a minute with Owen here finding a, an acceptable ignition wire. I'll have him change the carburetor real quick. Um, so we're gonna do a couple things and then we're gonna do an exhaust manifold gasket. Ooh. What, you got a leak? Jeez, no, the manifold is like cracked. Yeah, the muffler, the muffler is blown up. But that's only part of our problem. Dude, that's huge. The crack is like, like. Yeah, we got an exhaust manifold leak. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not a cracked manifold, but we'll find out. I'm guessing they just didn't put a gasket back. Um, not sure if the fuel pump's working, although I think it is. I think it is. Um, anyway, so we're going to change the carburetor, check some fluids, kind of just do a little bit of due diligence. It's only three o'clock. We might as well try to do the exhaust manifold now. I'm going to pull a plug, see how that looks. I'll report back in a little bit. All right. Owens, if you've ever, ever done a one barrel or two barrel, whatever this is, one barrel on 196, they're a pain in the butt to get to the bolts. Uh, just leave it for now. We'll hook it up later. You want to cut this one off? Where did this hose go? Where did this hose go? Uh, there's like a, okay. yeah, there's a broken mm -hmm. off hose to get that, pull that off and put the other one on. Oh. I just want to show you the ultimate rig job of all. Like uh, Whitney Houston, I think it is, says the greatest love of all. This is the greatest rig of all. So the air pump, this is an air pump. It's supposed to go into a set of smog tubes like right here. But obviously when the motor got changed or something happened, so they put this to the vent. This is an atmospheric vent. So this is literally pumping air into the motor when it's supposed to allow atmosphere like pressure to release from the motor so i'm just going to take this off um but man that's why people that don't know anything about ih motors or motors in general probably shouldn't work on stuff out
things pegged out. But it definitely like cleaned up when it was running. I don't know if you can hear me, but it's flowing like crazy, which means there's no thermostat in it. It's fine for now, but we got, we got to put a thermostat. And it like it's running, clacking a little bit. Yeah, either it's got a blown head gasket or no thermostat. We're going to let it warm up a little bit. We have all the electrical bypass, so I started it with a screwdriver, and uh, we have this, this jumper wire. But it's definitely like smoothed out, and it sounds pretty good. I'm gonna see if we can make him. No, it's fine though. No. Okay. We're gonna see if we can make him move. See if the clutch works. Throttle's working from inside, that's cool. I can't shut it off, so. I'm a little nervous. Uh, it feels like the e-brake works. I'm not sure if we have power brakes, but I'm not sure if the brakes work. Clutch seems to work. I mean, the clutch is working. Dude, she's gonna drive for sure. I kind of want to drive it. E-brake works, that's awesome. I want to drive it. Let's, uh, we're going to try to hook up the real gas tank and see what happens. Stay tuned. about these four bangers. Is that just the new carb? Yeah, de definitely. I, I think the new carb and just cleaning up the wiring. It sounds awesome. So we're gonna hook up the real gas tank. Here, I'll do it, I'll just do it right now while it's running. Ooh, it's hot. 
Um, actually, let's shut it off and we'll, uh, I'm gonna do this, not necessarily off camera, but I gotta shut it off. Yeah, it's good, we just bought it. Owen's putting gas in it. We got the gas line hooked up to the real tank. I installed a filter. Oh, that's good, I'll save a little bit. Okay, grab that air filter and cleaner. Chuck the air filter in the back, just get the air cleaner. I'll take the gas can. All right, man, we're stoked. We're gonna drive this baby. Plus, I'm not 100% sure this is buckskin. All right, here we go. I don't know what to think. I think the brakes work. I should probably carry a fire extinguisher when I do stuff like this. First drive and, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. There's no power steering. Motors on top of the exhaust leak, it's actually clacking a little bit. Seems pretty high geared actually. First gear. Transmission feels great. Engine is kind of clacky, but it could be, you know, needs an oil change. I don't have the oil. Anyway, it drives. Woo! We'll get the power steering hoses fixed. We'll just, this will set us up for round two. I'm not sure if that'll be in this video. We'll just kind of see how it, how it works out. But we have a running, driving 77 Terra. Not buckskin. So the brakes work. So, sweet guys, so we got it running, Owen, huge help. Um, put a carb on it, check the fuel. I mean, the fuel system was actually pretty decent. Uh, cleaned up some electrical, put a radiator in. She's clacking away. I don't love that, but we'll figure out what's wrong with it. And next, <laughs> next time, well, there's probably gonna be a three-part series on this truck. Because next phase is clean up electrical, get the gauges working. Owen's going to replace power steering lines, put a thermostat in it, clean it, clean it, do exhaust, do the exhaust manifold gasket, lots of mechanical stuff, and then we'll have fun with the lift kit, tires, um, highway testing, everything. Thanks for joining us on the Scout Life. Get out and work on your truck. Hello everybody, I'm your host for the day, um, Sean's son, and what I've done to the truck so far is change the hoses on the power steering stuff, and I filled that back up, and then right now I'm changing the gasket on the exhaust manifold that's down there. And then up next is spark plugs. So I'm super excited. Okay, phenomenal performance. The old exhaust manifold gasket uh, compared to the new one. Yeah, bit of damage. Uh, so let's just, um, so what I'm gonna do next is just go at it with a screwdriver and since it's all metal, like metal and metal and metal, it's not rubber, I gotta make sure um, that no metal is slipping past me. So just give it a little scrape. And then I'm gonna throw that new one on. 
and then we'll move on to the spark plugs.